Well, our final question this week on the drive through gym, an extended edition for everyone stuck at home, was sent in on Twitter using the hashtag corny drive through from Peter D. Hi, Jim. Thoughts on Jacques Rougeau? <laughs> he was in Memphis for a while, then to the WWF where he was featured for maybe seven years. A good run, but a good talent? Well, Jacques was a very good worker. Um, as, you know, especially as, as he got experience when he was in the early 80s, when he was Jerry Roberts, I think, in, in Atlanta for a brief period of time because the people in Georgia couldn't pronounce Jacques Rougeau. Uh, and they would have, they would have probably not liked him as a baby face because he was a foreigner. Um, and then he came to Memphis as a baby face and he was Jacques Rougeau jr. Back then, by the way, because people were still, still remembered, you know, from the magazines and everything, the Rougeau name and Jacques Rougeau senior, but we we've told this before, but it's, it's fucking hilarious. He was just so French Canadian. He just got so much heat. He just had that mouth and just, he just drove everybody nuts. And also because he was the son of, I mean, the Rougeau family in Montreal and Jacques has been probably over the last, well, for a 20 year period there, the most successful independent promoter in the world, because when he would run Montreal, he would draw crowds at the forum of 10,000 or more. The Rougeau name in Montreal still to this day is like a major sporting name, just like a, a football player, basketball player, NASCAR driver, whatever down here would be in their various part of the country. Um, and he was a very good worker, but just, he was just so fucking annoying that he came in as a baby face in Tennessee and he had that accent. So already it's eh. one of the most famous stories in Memphis wrestling behind the scenes was they brought him in as a baby face and they were giving him a decent push, uh, you know, on, on the card, not as like a, Bill Dundee, Austin Idol, Jimmy Valiant level baby face, but you know, decent on the card. But he's, so finally he gets a ride with Lawler, who was the booker at that point from Memphis TV to Nashville. And I can't remember who else was in the car. But I, everybody retold the story. It may have been Dutch Mantel, but at any rate, they're to going down the road, talking Lawler's driving for once. And Fucking, uh, you know, I, I guess he floated the idea of maybe turning Rougeau heel or elsewise Jacques was like, can I get a bigger push or whatever, you know, but basically the line was, he looked at Lawler. He said, what's the matter, big boy? You afraid I get over you? <laughs> what the, this fucking guy, it's Jerry Lawler in Memphis. Who's not only the booker, but the biggest star by multiple increments and this guy is, thinks if they give him a push as a baby face he will get over Lawler but just for that the next fucking week on TV they turn him heel because they figured you know this guy he's is so fucking annoying to us he's got to be as annoying and and we'll let him talk as a heel in that fucking French accent and the and just his just let him be himself and he'll get heat so they turn him heel and he comes out, he starts doing the heel promos. And this was when not everybody had music. Only the main event guys had music. And, you know, if there's 20 guys on the card, you got music in two or three matches, right? It was just starting the transition. And basically, if it's the fabulous ones, if it's Jerry Lawler, if it's Jimmy Valiant, they got music. Rougeau wanted music. And they didn't want him to have the music. They didn't want to play music for everybody. No. Uh, so he got, went out and bought the biggest boom box. Do they still even have that term? The portable stereo cassette tape player that was five feet long with these giant speakers and 50 pounds at least. And you had to carry it on your shoulder like a giant TV camera. He went out and bought one of those and he started playing his own music. To the ring, Dirty Laundry by Don Henley. Doom, 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 doom. And he turned it up so loud, I know it must have given him brain damage because he had it on his shoulder, but you could actually hear it in some of these big buildings, even though it wasn't being played over the PA system. And that was, and he legitimately did that on purpose because they wouldn't let him play music. 
But then it was such a heat getting fucking heelish prickish thing to do that it became part of his gimmick. And I've actually got publicity pictures I took of him with that goddamn giant boombox on his fucking shoulder. And it just, it, yeah. So I can understand, honestly, why that, uh, uh, you know, Raymond Rougeau, meanwhile, fucking great guy. I mean, I'm not saying Jacques wasn't great. Jacques was just a bit of a, you know, French Canadian prick. Whereas Ray was kind of laid back. He was the one everybody liked. He didn't, you know, piss anybody off. That's why he came out unscathed in the, in the issue with the, the Bulldogs. But that's what, you know, you can imagine Jacques Rougeau and Dynamite Kid being in the same locker room. They would grate on each other. I, when I heard about that, I said, well, if there's two people that probably would get into something, it'd be them. Jacques Rougeau, what's up? You think I'm going to get over you, bigger boy? Good Lord. How do you think the Midnight Express would have done against the Rougeaus in Montreal? Oh, my God, we'd probably gotten assassinated. Because we, you know, they would have had a great match with them because either version of the Midnight Express has had classic matches with teams that weren't nearly as good as the Rougeau brothers. And especially with the you know, the level of love that they had for the Rougeau family in Montreal and what I could have said about French people on fucking television, I don't know we'd have got out alive because they had some fucking heat there. When they did that deal with Ronnie and Jimmy Garvin in, what, 86, 87, they were drawing, well, they were the, the second biggest, uh, well, I guess third biggest pr promotion in North America behind the WWF and the NWA in Montreal just on the, strength of you know that montreal local promotion they were outdrawing Vern. they were certainly outdrawing any of the territories that were left they did didn't they do a sellout in the montreal forum one time or come close to it 15 16 17 000 people it, you know that it was hot so yeah we we would have got killed 